Hey everybody, Goosebumps for Dummies back at it again with another video. This time I'm talking about Goosebumps. Episodes. Two-parters. And we're gonna be fucking ranking them. Yes, we're gonna be ranking Goosebumps two-parters. Now, I actually did a video similar to this not long ago where I ranked the Goosebumps TV specials. And these are sort of similar. Only, we are including those. But also every other two-parter in the entire show. Which means all of season four is on here. So, yeah, um... Brace yourself. There are 17 combined episodes, 34 individual episodes, but we'll be just doing combined for runtime. And of course, I don't know, rank individual parts. Uh, it's going to get way too complicated and hard. I definitely have to rewatch them. I know what they are like as a whole, but as individual parts, it's going to be a little bit harder. And it's going to take a lot more work on my ends. Besides, I don't need to really rewatch these anyways. I have watched these all at least 20 times. Maybe not Werewolf Skin. Not very familiar with that one, though. Is its placement on the list is fair, but uh, either way, uh, I've watched these countless times, so there was little to no preparation needed. I only needed to watch a couple of these or rethink my uh, thought process of how they went just a little bit. So, uh, yeah, uh, all of the fucking specials are in here and two parters and trilogy. Trilogy is actually going to be included because it's a free parter and Fuck it, why not? Besides, you'll be extremely shocked of where its placement might be. And, um, we won't actually be including Monster Blood and Monster Blood 2, or more Monster Blood. We won't be including those because they don't count. Two-parters uh, usually pick up right after Monster Blood 2, or more Monster Blood. It, it picks up in its entirely different story with just the same characters. Basically, a sequel episode that just came out, the, you know, literally right after. Uh, we won't be including sequels as well, that's just stupid, or any DVDs that release with their sequel on it, like Say Cheese and Die, and Say Cheese and Die Again. Uh, it's just the straight up part one and part two episodes that have that title, and of course, Trilogy Part 3. And, yeah, and that's all we're going to be including, uh, they have to have that title, and, and that's our standard, so. Enough rambling about how this is going to work, oh, we have 17 here, and I want to get to it. Starting off at the bottom of the barrel kind of pile of shit and actually the worst goosebumps episode and probably one of the worst media i have ever experienced one day at horror land making it number 17 holy shit i used to kind of like this episode as a child but uh over the years i have grown to absolutely fucking hate it uh especially part two which is where my main point of hatred uh derives from part two is god awful it is a horrible piece of shit uh, it is very hard to like. The jokes are very bad. They are extremely corny and just not funny at all. Not even the fucking slightest. And they're just terrible. Very terrible jokes. Part 2 is a fucking joke. To an actual banger book, too. It just, it's just such a joke, man. They ruined something really fucking good here. Part 1's really just eh. I don't hate it, but I don't really like it either. It's got some good moments, but it's not really that great. And, uh, yeah, uh, One Day Horrorland is pretty darn bad. Moving on, number 16. This is the season 4 episode. Lots of these are going to be lower on the list, uh, to be fair. <sighs> How I got my shrunken head. So, I don't know, I'm a dick sucker for the shrunken head. I like the shrunken head. It's one of my favorite creatures in Goosebumps. It may just have one line in the original, uh, How I Got My Shrunken Head book, but I think it's a very interesting creature. It, it could be expanded upon, and of course... It's just cool. It, it's a cool concept. I like this episode version more. It does more. I think the episode part one is particularly interesting. I think I'd even say it's okay. Part two is kind of eh, too bad. Because we have some very cringy stuff thrown in there. And I'll just leave it at that. By the way, when I get to the middle, I'll start uh, explaining less about the episodes. Now moving on here. Number uh, 15. Deep Trouble. Another season four. Straight off the bat. Now... I want to clarify this, I think this episode is a little overhated. People shit on this one all the time. And I don't think it's actually bad. I think it's just, eh. And upon rethinking, I can really get the hate. I think uh, it's way too similar to the actual sequel of Deep Trouble, and way too unsimilar to both books in general in a lot of ways. And it should have just been Deep Trouble 1, or maybe done something other than this dumb shit that we got. I don't think it's tor- sorry, I don't think it's terrible. I really like the ending, too. Uh, part one's pretty good. And I think the actor for one of the women in here was actually in Werewolf Skin's uh, episode as a bus driver, so that's pretty cool. They have a very similar voice, if not. Uh, 
yeah, this episode ain't that great, but it it's it's uh, I'll rewatch it from time to time. Next up, number 14, you will be pissed off about how low well I put this, but to be fair, everything past, <laughs> everything past Deep Trouble is actually pretty darn good. Yes, uh, we're only four in, and I am running and just, just shouting out, damn, this is pretty good. Starting off with Perfect School in our pretty darn good section, uh, number 14. Uh, yeah, this is a banger episode. There's not a lot to go over here. They made a short story into something really awesome and kind of grand. Uh, it's kind of got like an a prison escape movie vibes. And uh, Brian O'Connor is a really cool character. There's lots of really cool scenes and a great ending. Mind I, I really like the ending of this episode. And yeah, it's just a really good episode, man. Moving on. This one I actually did have to rewatch and I kind of mentioned it in the intro, I believe, unless it was a different recording. <sighs> Werewolf skin. Don't, don't piss on me. Don't, well... What the fuck? Do not leave a shitty comment in the comment section telling me how fucking stupid I am. We're in the pretty darn good section. And I like a lot of these episodes. A lot of the two-parters are actually particularly good because you get a lot more to actually uh, watch here. This is a pretty darn good one. It actually surprised me. I think part one is a tiny bit better than part two. Part two has some really good moments. I think the werewolves in this look really good. The werewolf skin idea is cool. I actually think I might prefer this over the book concept-wise, but not execution-wise, I'll say. Yeah, uh, this is just a really darn good episode. Now, moving on here, uh, another season four. Giga Wild, well, guess which one it is. It's Ghost Next Door. Number 12. Holy fuck. Uh, wait. Yeah, number 12. <sighs> okay. I really fucking like this episode. I can kind of get the issues, and Hannah's acting is kind of, eh. Some of the acting in these episodes are really, uh, pretty bad. But not in the two-parters, particularly. I think they're, uh, much better than some of the acting in the other episodes, like the standalones or so the sequels and stuff, especially Teichi's and I again. I don't even care if the acting's bad or not, just a bad episode. I like shitting on it. Anyways... Ghost Next Door is a really darn good episode. The Shadow Motherfucker is actually terrifying. There's a scene involving him that just fucking sends chills down my spines. I said that weirdly. And it's just a really darn good story. It's got a great uh, moral to it. It's got a great ending. And I like the characters here. Their acting isn't horrible, but it's definitely some of the weakest in these two parters. Yeah. Alright, next up, number 11. And holy shit, y'all, we're on the 9.5 out of 10s. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, these are, like, really unbelievably good episodes. Starting off that with Cry of the Cat. I actually did rewatch this because I, I was hoping maybe this would be a banger or maybe a lesser good one. Maybe I can differentiate, sorry, differentiate the list good enough because I used to get this, like, 10s of the trends across the board. And by the way, this camera's actually sitting on another copy of this DVD right here, funny enough. <laughs> Thought I'd just point that out. And, uh, upon rewatch, this episode is fucking great. Holy shit. It's one of the funniest episodes I have ever seen. Yeah, funny. For a Series 2000 episode, this breaks the fourth wall and completely flips the plot of the book on its head. It is hilarious. Uh, it is actually scary at times. I think the actual effects, well, uh, practical effects... For Rip the Cat and some other scenes were goddamn creepy and eerie and terrifying. They look great. It's got a good story. I really like uh, the ending even. I really like uh, the second part a lot more than the first part. There's some great uh, moments throughout. And it's just a fucking fantastic fourth wall break episode. It's really fucking funny. Yeah, uh, I, the only issue I'd have with it is that it's not actually the book. I think they should have took that with Deep Trouble, baby. Because... I mean, are they going to really do a bunch of mermaids swimming in the ocean? Oh my god, man. Anyways, next up, you saw this coming. This wouldn't make it very high. I think this is number 10. <sighs> Night in Terror Tower. Now, I want to clarify, I think the ending of this second part is one of the best Goosebumps media out there. Or... Some of the scariest, even. I think the soundtrack is awesome. I think what's going on in the second part is really fucking terrifying. Even the first part is creepy. I think this is one of the scarier of of the two-part episodes. 
uh, this soundtrack, the actual episode, the story, and even the characters are all really fucking good. By the way, the main character, I believe, is Carly Beth's friend from the TV show. Uh, Catherine Short, Catherine Long, I'm not really sure. <sighs> I get their names confused a lot. She's the main character. Yeah, pretty fucking cool. Uh, great episode, though. Fantastic. Not a 10 out of 10, but uh, it also has a really nice uh, Stein out intro. I really like that. I know BD Moore also likes that a lot. So I thought I'd point that out. Now, number nine. Welcome to Dead House. Yeah, I know this copy looks like shit. Uh, I've only had one copy over the years, and I've had this copy since I was probably like f three or four. Yeah, this copy's nearly as old as me. Oh, actually, it's way older, but I've had it for almost my whole life, dude. Yeah, um, dude. <sighs> This episode is a fucking banger. Once again, not a 10 out of 10. I think 10 out of 10s are gonna come, like, right after this soon. Oh boy, this episode. Uh, not only is it very nostalgic for me, because I really, really, really like this episode. It's a great zombie story. I think the character's really good. I think the plot and story itself is actually really fucking creepy. Uh, I like the added, uh, thing of this reef. I thought that was really cool. I thought all the characters and acting... It's really spot on and really good here, and, uh, you know, it's just a lot to like here. It's a great fucking episode. By the way, they actually used the book cover on the back, which looks really awesome. So, yeah. Um, and, oh, of course, on the front, but still. <laughs> yeah, great episode. Uh, I've always liked that one a lot. It might be just personal bias why it's that high, but either way, banger episode. Absolutely love that one. Next up, number nine, or, wait, number eight werewolf skin it actually what am i high werewolf of fever swamp not actually beat werewolf skin yeah so the werewolf of fever swamp i think grady's actor is actually really good here i don't know if that's controversial or not i think the plot is really good and holy shit this episode is terrifying at times it's actually really fucking scary and i remember uh having uh some pretty vivid not nightmares but uh <laughs> Nadrian's about how fucking scary this episode was, man. Uh, as a child watching this, sent chills down my spine. I actually binged this for the first time with Dummy Free, too, so I have fond memories with this episode. Not really the reason why it's so high, it's just a damn good fucking episode. Yeah, uh, fantastic, dude. Hey, everybody, uh, I had to quickly put this in because for some reason I forgot Attack of the Mutants. For some reason, after years of collecting, I've never been able to find the DVD of Attack of the Mutants. So I completely forgot about it. And yeah, this is where it would end up. Uh, I don't know where this is on the ranking exactly, but uh, yeah, it's between, uh, they think to stay out of the basement or in Dead House or something, either way. Uh, yeah, this episode is like the first 10 out of 10, I'd argue here. Uh, this episode is fantastic. Uh, I love the, the setting. I love the characters. Whoever did Skipper did a great job. Mutant himself is a cool villain. And yeah, it gets better as it goes on too, which is a plus. And it's just a fucking great episode, man. And a very cool story. Sorry I couldn't uh, put this in much, and I kind of forgot about it. Kind of, kind of have to bear with me here. I, there's no DVD. I completely forgot about it. And uh, yeah, uh, whenever you hear a number, move it up one. Yeah, minus like the top five. Or all right. Next up, we're in the 10 out of 10s now. <sighs> Number seven. I might even put this higher in the future, but it just can't be uh, the next couple. Like, or maybe next one, but it can't be what's coming up, man. It's out of the basement. Uh, and this is the first VHS we have to pull out that isn't one of the ultimates. And one of the last VHSs. We only have to pull a Haunted Mask later. Oh my god, man. This episode is fucking awesome. I think this is easily one of the scariest episodes, if not the scariest episode of all of Goosebumps. The plans, the lighting, the mood, the soundtrack, and the fucking father's acting. It's all fucking creepy and well done. I'm sorry I'm saying fucking so much in this video, too. I didn't even realize that. I don't cost that much, but uh, this is a long recording, so bear with me here. In this episode, I have watched so many times. I have fond memories with it. Not, I'm not just doing it for nostalgia. It's just a damn good episode. 
I think it's got a great story. It's very creepy, which is one of the main highlights. This episode gets like three or four points automatically just because of how terrifying it is at times. And uh, yeah, it's got great characters. I think the main two characters are really fucking good. And it's got some very tense moments thrown in there, thrown in there as well. I think uh, the jacket scene in the basement was really fucking creepy. Not creepy, but tense and a little creepy. Next up, oh my god. Don't yell at me. Don't yell at me. Welcome to Camp Nightmare. Oh my god. How is it not number one? Okay. So some people suck the dick of this episode a lot because Billy's acting is like fantastic. I think Billy is okay. He's not fantastic or anything. He's just an okay character. He's much better in the book, I feel, but I feel he also does a great job here over played him. I know there was actually a podcast that had him on, the actor. It's pretty cool very recently. But yeah, uh, besides that episode, insanely awesome. I think this is easily one of the best episodes. We're also in the top five right now, so <laughs> yeah, this is number five. Um, it's got a great story. I think the twist is really fun. It actually has grown on me over the years. Uh, the episodes get tense as they go on. The soundtrack is also great. You might be hearing it right now, for all I know. You're probably hearing the soundtracks for some of these episodes right now, actually. And, uh, yeah, it's just a great fucking story, dude. And Uncle Al. I've said this a couple times in the past. I really like this actor, man. Uncle Al does a great job. Remember to fuck play him. That's exactly who I would imagine in the books is Uncle Al, man. Great job. And now moving on to number four. Don't kick my ass. All right. Number four, the OG Haunted Mask. Now these next three just outdo it by a wee bit. I think this one is honestly based on preference. Well, number one's kind of biased or rather unfair. <laughs> it still makes sense, but out of the next two, this is just my least favorite of them. Uh, they're all equally as fucking great, all fucking grand, awesome tales, awesome characters. And uh, I just really, really, really like these. And uh, yeah, this is just the least good of the three, well, the two that are coming up. Yeah, a uh, fantastic episode. There's not really much I can add to the conversation about this one. We all know uh, what's good about it, man. It's a fantastic episode. Now moving on. Number three, The Haunted Mask 2, the sequel of The Goodwill Sticker. Mm. When did I buy this? There, there's usually dates on these things, but whatever. Holy shit, man. Mm. Slightly prefer this one because I think uh, the climax of this one is much better. Uh, not much better, but a wee bit better. I like uh, the defeat of the Haunted Mask this one and the inclusion of two masks. There's some great scenes in here. And yeah, it's just pretty much on par with the first uh, Haunted Mask uh, duology episode thing. The premiere of the actual Goosebumps show. Yeah, it's just fantastic. I'm glad they made a part two, too. And I think it features most of the same actors, which is awesome. Now, moving on. Number two. All right, all right. Now you can throw your fucking tomatoes. Night of the Living Dummy Free. I understand uh, what, what people might be saying bias a little bit but they're on the same fucking level to be fair this is the easiest to turn on episode sound weird in all of goosebumps i feel i've watched this one well over probably like 80 or 100 times in my entire fucking life and i am not exaggerating that i have stayed up late watching the episode and rewinding it before i i rewinded it like seven times in one night just as background noise and i kind of got interested in it more than the actual thing I was uh, focusing on, like on my phone or something. Yeah, that's how fucking good this episode is. It's more interesting than playing on your phone and scrolling Instagram. <laughs> yeah, um, fantastic episode. I think Slappy here is the best Slappy media probably ever, and holy god, the story is great, the acting is top tier. It's somebody back Sorry, it's some of the best acting in the entire show. Deadass. I think we can all agree on that, at least. The acting here is fucking great. I think part two is really fun, really scary. And, yeah, uh, the Rocky fight scene, we all know that. Rocky is really cool in this episode. Too bad he didn't really do anything in the book. 
but Rocky's fight scene with Slappy was fantastic and a great turning point for his character that was up until that point really nothing. Yeah, Dummy Freeze episode, one of the best, if not the best Goosebumps episode out there, dude. And number one, kind of guessed it, because I heavily mentioned it in the intro, I believe, unless it was a separate recording. I, I tried twice. <sighs> Chilogy. Chilogy. Kind of biased, and here's the reason why it's number one. It's on par with the first, well, sorry, the final uh, couple episodes we just mentioned there. But it, there's free. It's free 10 out of 10 episodes, dude. It's free. I know, it sounds biased as fuck, but I feel it deserves me on the list. And today's a multi-part episode, and it wouldn't make it on a top, sorry, a free-parter episode list. Or, you know, it, the only list you would actually make it on, uh, unless we're talking about, like, what is coming to live list which would be fucking weird, um, would obviously be the entire ranking series. So I thought I'd just throw well on here. For shits and giggles, I guess. And it just makes sense, alright? Kind of unfair, because it's free 10 out of 10 episodes that I love almost as much as Night Living Dummy, but since it's free, it just counters over it, and I honestly would actually prefer watching this. This isn't my most watched episode of all time, or episodes, but goddamn, Carl... Carl is one of the greatest villains I've seen in all of Goosebumps. He's hilarious, he's even threatening, he's got some great dialogue, and his actor is very well done. It's an original story, which makes this even more a uh, special feeling. It's actually a great story, it's got some great soundtrack, you know, money. Money! Oh my god, love that soundtrack. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> part two... It's easily one of the best episodes in all of Goosebumps, specifically part two, man. I really like Strike Free You're Out, uh, or Doomed, whatever the fuck it's called. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, there is so much to love about these episodes. Yeah, I think the show writers, and this was approved by Stein, by the way, really pulled uh, this one out of their ass, and they, they put some care on it. You know, they, they, they obviously spread out uh, the shit and, and just kind of wiped it off, you know. Okay, that was a dumb fucking, uh, comparison, but whatever. Yeah, the, the show writers were fucking cooking when they made that up. Trilogy is probably the best Goosebumps episode. Yeah, I fucking said it. Come at me. It's fantastic. Uh, over the years and over the past couple months, I've been really thinking, damn, Trilogy might be better than Dummy Free. It's just way more enjoyable. <laughs> and Dummy Free is fucking one of the best things I've ever experienced, so... Yeah, that, that's some tough competition right there. Yeah, uh, that is my ranking of the entirety of the Goosebumps series. Well, two-parters. I don't know what the fuck was on that. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tell me your ranking if you bother to put it down there. If you want to split into multiple parts, I would recommend it. I don't want to read for 34 or 17. It's much more efficient. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.